All it takes to make real good homemade Texas chili is a beef brisket and we're not going to use all of this so I'm going to show you how we're going to trim it. You need some fresh onion and canned tomatoes work real well. And then for spice all you really need is some cumin and some chili powder and you might want a little salt and pepper. The next part of the operation will be a two, two knife process because we want to trim as much of the visible fat off of the brisket as we can. And in order to do that, we're going to use a very nice uh, uh, boning or fillet knife, which has been run through the sharpener. Okay, so what we're doing is we're uh, hand trimming off the, uh, the visible fat as much as possible so that we can end up with as healthy a chili as we can. Uh, the second way to defat your chili is to skim the fat off of it as it cooks because there will be some residual fat that comes to the top uh, that you can periodically skim off and drain. At this point we're almost done with our hand trimming and if you can't get it all that's okay. It's, it will cook out and then you can get it off of the top of the chili as it's cooking. Uh, we're going to use a little canola oil because of the fact that we're getting rid of so much of the fat uh, that in the uh, browning or the searing of the meat cubes that we're going to do in a little bit you'll uh, benefit from having the extra fat but that of course is a healthier fat than what we're taking off of the brisket. We have, we've transferred the meat to a regular cutting board because now we're going to do our cubes that are going to be about a half to three quarters of an inch on a side. In the meanwhile, you can go ahead and start heating up a stock pot or a Dutch oven. Uh, you need about two tablespoons of oil to replace all the fat that we've cut out so that the meat doesn't stick while it browns. So we're going to let that get heated up. And in the meanwhile, we are going to start doing our trims. Okay, so you're going to do just basically half to three quarter inch pieces of the brisket and set it aside for the Dutch oven. And you're going to do this in batches because when you crowd meat into a pan, it tends to steam in its own liquid and turn an unappetizing gray instead of that nice brown that you're looking for. What we're going to make the chili with is our liquid is going to be just simple water. If you would like to use beef stock, it's going to take an equivalent amount, maybe some more than this. We'll, we'll see as we get along. Uh, the thing I wanted to let you know is that if you don't use chicken or beef stock, you're probably better off going ahead and seasoning your meat before you brown it with a little salt and pepper. So we're going to sprinkle some black, finely ground black pepper and we're going to give about a teaspoon of, or half a teaspoon, somewhere in there, of kosher salt and mix that up a bit. Okay, so we're going to let this brown in a large, deep stock pot, heavy duty, on medium heat. I like to use uh, Tone's chili powder when making chili. And what I like to do is I like to season each batch of meat as it's browning. So we're going to go ahead and do about two tablespoons on here. We're going to mix that in. And then for every tablespoon of chili powder, I like to use Tone's ground cumin, about one teaspoon of cumin for every two tablespoons of chili powder. I'm adding a little bit of oil just to keep the fat level up since we've done such a good job of trimming off all the saturated fat. And as we go through the cooking process, we'll be removing as much of the canola oil off of the chili as it's 
cooking down. Of course you'll want to check your cooking batch occasionally and keep stirring it from time to time. What I've done is I've turned the, the fire down to low because I'm going to transfer this to a stainless steel bowl and then I will continue to cube the next batch and have it ready for the pot. Folks, today I'm using a set of Wolfgang Puck Santoku knives I bought from Sam's Club. These are some of the best knives I've ever used. I like to put some fresh garlic in with each batch of meat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it and I'm going to uh, mash it and throw it into the stock pot with the meat with each batch of meat that we're going to brown. The next thing I'm going to do is get my onions ready because we're going to take a rough chop onion, two of them actually, for a batch this size and we're going to add it in after we've added the liquid to the chili meat. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you don't have to be very precise. This can be just a basic rough chop. Okay, so we're going to take our first two batches and add them back into this last batch so that all the meat is together in the pot. And then we're going to start adding our liquid and our vegetable. We're going to turn our heat back up to medium. We're going to add water and we're going to see if the first four cups is going to be enough. And if it's not, we're going to keep adding until we're a couple inches above the meat. One of the things that you can do to vary the recipe is to add a couple of bottles of beer to the stock pot uh, in lieu of an equivalent amount of water. It's not necessary, but it does give a nice taste to the chili, so try it sometime. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it back on medium, and we're going to let the chili come to a simmer. After the chilies come back to a simmer, we're going to add our onions and mix them in, and we're going to take three cans of whole peeled tomatoes with their liquid and add it to the pot. Over time these tomatoes will actually dissolve as will the onions. If you'd like to break apart the uh, tomatoes uh, or cut them into smaller pieces you can do so but during the cooking process which is probably going to last the next four to five hours uh, under low heat with the pot partially covered these tomatoes will dissolve. One of the things I like to keep around the kitchen for fat skimming is a a small beaker like this and it allows the fat to pour off of the top uh, and you can uh, see the the fat here on the top even now at this early stage of the cooking process and uh, this is just probably the easiest way to help you defat this chili so that you end up with the healthiest possible end product. Okay so now we're going to add our fresh onions and mix them in. And over the next four or five hours of slow cooking over low heat, these onions will just kind of dissolve into the chili. Last ingredient for our homemade chili is going to be these peeled tomatoes. What I like to do is hand squeeze each tomato into little bits. It can be messy and tricky, but keep at it and you'll figure it out and that'll help them dissolve more quickly into the chili okay so that's it it's ready to finish cooking you can relax now for about the next four hours you only need to check on it periodically add a little bit of liquid water or beer if you feel like the liquid level is getting too low and what I would do is put it on medium low cover it partially like that let a little bit of the steam escape and it will cook down and then finally at the end if it needs more thickening you can always add a little corn masa or cornstarch to some water and turn your heat back up to medium for a short while stir in your your cornstarch or corn masa liquid and then turn it back off and that'll finish it up for you that's it that's how easy it is to make real texas chili <laughs>